community, Dark Dose back with you again. Um, I'm filming today. Today it's Monday, the 25th of April. I uh, probably will leave it a while to throw this video up. Uh, I do have another video up at the moment, so I don't want to follow it up too soon, so I may leave this till the end of the week. Um, of course, at the moment, as everybody knows, the, um, the sudden and unexpected death of Prince has been a um, major topic uh, in, in the VC. Um, um, Personally, I, I look. I, I I do like I, I do like his. Um, I would be a fan of his output, of his eighties uh, output, uh, roughly up to about nineteen, the early nineties. For me, that's a cut off point. Um, um, from that point on, he started going off in a more R and B or kind of um, R and B and hip hop direction. Um, my interest in him kind of goes pretty much kind of tails off somewhat at that point. Um, I did pick up Cream re remixes, a copy of that. Um, not too long. Ago. Well, I picked it up in a kind of a, a charity haul. Uh, I did end up selling it. Um, a couple of years ago as well, I did pick up a copy of Love Sexy, which I do regret. I sold that as well. I do regret selling that. Um, uh, I, I I wish I had hung on to that um, in retrospect. But I do have uh, this piece, um, which is a 12-inch of um, Paisley Park. Um, uh, I, I picked this, this up late last year as part of a, a big charity shop haul which I made. Um, in, now this is actually a a, a, um, uh, a mispress. It, it plays this track, She's Always In My Hair, twice. Uh, plays it on the A side as as indicated, but it also plays it at the start of the B-side, uh, along with Paisley Park itself. So uh, it is a bit of a rarity, this item. And, um, uh, I will be hanging on to this, of course. I'm, I'm, it's not going anywhere. Um, but moving on now. Um, I'm going to show you a few pickups. At, I will be fitting in an extremely a massive haul that I made of X Library uh, records, X Library vinyl. Um, uh, these are okay. Um, I'll, 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 I'll get to that in a minute. I'll, I'll start off first with um, with something. This is a major, major record. Kind of, well, it, it, yeah, okay. It's by an artist whom I have next to nothing. I almost nothing by um, on vinyl. Um, very hard to come across. Uh, the record itself is his most um, critically acclaimed work. Um, one that I had been looking for to get on vinyl uh, for quite a while, but. Um, and that is um, A Love Supreme by John Coltrane, uh, originally released in 1965 on Impulse. Uh, this, um, okay, I picked this up in a flea market. It's called the Mother Jones Flea Market, which where I've picked up quite a lot of stuff in the past, but I hadn't been there. I hadn't been there in a few months. Um, um, this is a 1995 reissue, um, uh, oh, oh, impulse reissue, and it is on 200 gram vinyl. Uh, now this is really heavy. Uh, it feels extremely heavy. Um, in the hands. 
Um, sounds fantastic. Um, now, I had been. I know there are uh, currently there are a lot of reissues in the shops at the moment of John Coltrane's back catalogue. Um, uh, I, I don't know enough about these reissues or how they sound or I, I, I wouldn't like getting a bit of feedback from, from anyone who has picked up a lot of these um, recent reissues, um, you know, uh, you know, if, if they're worth picking up or or how they sound. Uh, now th this sounds absolutely excellent, um, but as everybody knows, originals, I mean, for one thing, where I come from, you just don't see originals of um, of Coltrane, and especially not this album of A Love Supreme. Um, very, very pro expensive, and when you do see them generally at record fairs, um, I, I imagine it's probably a bit easier to pick up in, in the States, but um, certainly here, um, you just do not, do not see it around at all, uh, except at record fairs, where, you know, it's just... That silly prices, um, but you know, so um, spiritual jazz. It's um, um, personally, I, I don't have any religious views or feelings myself. I do strongly appreciate though music and and art which has been inspired by religious or, or spiritual beliefs of of the. Of the artist, um, so yeah, so Love Supreme. It, it is a reference to John Coltrane's um, re religious feelings. Um, interestingly, he there, there's a. Ch I was reading about a church in um, some church in San Francisco where they worship. Like, they kind of basically worship him as a god, and they have like an image of him in. In stained glass, which is a really nice piece of work. The stained glass, if you if you just anyone to look it up, you know, um, online. Um, yeah, so yeah, f amazing album, um, a must-have, and um, you know, one of the seminal m music um, works of the twentieth century, basically. And very very happy to have it in my collection. Uh, my very first John Coltrane vinyl. I do have one or two bits and pieces on CD and cassette, but uh, this is my first on vinyl. And um, um, got for uh, yeah, I got for about thirteen euros. Um, maybe fifteen. Maybe that works out at about fifteen dollars. I think. Um, so pleased with this. Um, it was a limited edition, I think. I don't know how many copies of this were pressed in 1995, but um, it, it does state that it is a, that it was a limited edition. Um, okay. Now, just before I show my big um, library music hall, um, I'll show one very interesting thing which I picked up in a charity shop. A charity shop, stroke, thrift shop, or... Goodwill shop, as they're known in the States. Um, the charity shops, they call them here, and in Britain, and um, maybe on the continent, I'm not sure. But I um, picked up this very interesting 12 inch. Um, now, this is by 10,000 Maniacs, a um, band you're all familiar with, uh, Nat Natalie Merchant. Uh, this is a quite early 12 inch. Um, I don't I don't think it was our first single, but it is a it is a very early one and it's from 1983 and it's called um, My Mother the War. Um, this is a UK edition. Um, interesting label there and um, Christian burial music and distributed by Rough Trade. Um, this is pretty rare, this, um, now, um, it does have a very badly water-damaged sleeve, as you can see, it's all kind of waved, and, uh, and the vinyl, um, sorry, just two seconds, um, now I put it into a new pla uh, bag, but the vinyl, uh, does have these there's a couple of marks on it. Um, see that white mark there? 
Um, I thought that was part of the um, the inner bag after getting stuck to it, and I was kind of I was going with my fingernail trying to scrape it off very gingerly. But it's not actually it it it, it is a mark on the vinyl, but it's just it, like it's turned white. I, I've never seen that myself before, so I, I don't know. But it is like an actual kind of a where it's just been kind of bit of vinyl kind of chipped off or something. Um, it does play uh, when it when the needle passes over that that bit though it does make this kind of kind of noise and it, it only lasts a few seconds. Um, uh, there's another, but um, okay. But this is um, really interesting. Very very different to um, what you might expect. Um, their their later stuff, which is kind of folky indie. Uh, this is very much kind of post punk and quick. Um, the two B-sides have a very strong dub reggae uh, feel, um, so yeah, it's it's kind of more, this kind of showcases their post-punk beginnings really, and um, very pleased to find it, because um, it's pretty rare, uh, even considering, you know, the, the water damage to the sleeve and stuff, but um, that's not all, they're tucked inside the sleeve, is this interview? Um, there's no date in it, but I think it's from around the early '90s. Um, it's an interview with Natalie Merchant from um, uh, Hot Press, which is an Irish um, music magazine. Um, um, she might be ready. Um, so that was that was quite interesting to find out. I haven't actually read it yet. Um, let's have a read of it when I get the chance. Um, so yeah, that's a very nice find. Um, rare twelve inch. No. Okay, so moving on to my big another another one of those big holes. Um, on Saturday, uh, I just had a strolled into town to do a bit of shopping. Um, just get some, just do a bit of grocery shopping basically, but, um, just a few minutes from where I live here, uh, is our main city library here in Cork City. Um, there's a, there's a few stalls, there was a stalls, um, set up, um, I think it was National Book Day, but, uh, there's a few stalls selling books and there's kind of, kind of a market stall and there's like other stalls selling kind of bits and interesting stuff. Now there was one stall, it's set up by the library themselves. Um, they were selling off old stock, so there's a lot of books and several boxes of vinyl. So my eagle eye um, <laughs> spotted them straight away and um, I began digging. Um, uh, this is around 12 o'clock. I don't know how long they've been out, but there's a lot of stuff there at that point. Um, uh, now, these, they all had price tags on them. They, I'll just show you. Uh, see there, that, 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 this one says two euro. Now, they're all individually priced. Some said one euro, two euro. Some of them are three, four euros. Um, so I was kind of, I was going through them. I, 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 I didn't intend to pick up that many because my, my budget was a bit limited so I was kind of going on what the price tag said but then I s s saw notice um, uh, all items all items 50 cent now 50 cent is half of a euro so um, 50 cent is like um, um, it's very 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 little um, uh, okay. Um, yeah, so that's that's a ten cent piece. So five of those. And I, I I clarified what the woman running the saw. I said, "Is is everything here um, fifty cent each?" And she said, "Yeah." And she said, um, "I can't remember what she said exactly, but she said that they were originally pricing everything individually, but then they just decided to go with just make everything fifty cent each." So I just decided how I'll just this is an opportunity good an opportunity to miss so 
stocked up very heavily on vinyl. Now, a lot of what I grabbed, a lot of what I grabbed are classical, um, as you might expect. That's kind of an example of a lot of what you might find in a um, library, uh, music libraries, but um, a lot of it is extremely rare and very interesting classical well, from my point of view. Um, and there's also some other pretty interesting stuff. I'll, I'll start off first. Um, okay, I, I'll try to go through these fairly quickly, but I will dwell on a few. Um, so, um, now this is um, Juan Martin and Mark, I'm sorry, Juan Martin and Mark Isham. Now, Mark Isham, I think, I might be wrong, but I think, Carm, have you shown a few things by him? I, th I might be wrong there. Um, this is called um, Painter in Sound, Music for a New Age. Uh, this came out in 1986 on WEA. -W and this is basically one Martin in it. Spanish guitarist um, from Andalusia, um, specializes in gypsy music. So it's basically him collaborating with Marsh, Mark Isham, who plays trumpet and synthesizer. Um, this is really, really interesting. This has a kind of um, kind of an ECM or Wyndham Hill kind of vibe to it. Um, so it's kind of um very very interesting I, I play this um yeah this is this is excellent this is a really really kind of um if you look if you like ecm but um basically this you know uh, this, this is right up your street this is a really nice album um there's, now this is something that was big on my want list um Walter Carlos by request. Uh, Walter Carlos, I showed something else by him, or sorry, Walter stroke Wendy Carlos, him, her, in my last video. Uh, this is another one that was on my want list. Um, Walter Carlos by request. Now this came out in 1975. Uh, as far as I know, Walter had become Wendy at this stage, but they're still referring to Walter Carlos. And, um, <laughs> absolutely mad cover. Um, Covers um, everything from Bach, Bert Bacharach to the Beatles, and uh, they're all depicted on this kind of cartoony sleeve there. And this crazy gorilla. Um, some of Walter Carlos's um, compositions are on this as well, and they are really there's a really kind of um, um, on side one, and there's really kind of Stockhausen kind of a vibe. Um, yeah, so Philip Philip Ramey on on piano, on those pieces. I really really like those pieces. There's also a really really strange cover of um, what's new Pussycat. <laughs> it's just really really bad. But um, Walter Carlos by request, uh, CBS 1975. Big on my want list. So very pleased to pick that up. Um, quite a f I picked up a, quite a few um. Irish folk um, records. Um, uh, sorry, just first off, um, Kevin Burke, uh, if the cap fits. Um, this is on a label called Mulligan. Um, uh, Irish folk label set up by Donald Lunny, uh, Donald Lunny of um, Planksty fame. Uh, th this is fantastic, this, this album, um, Kevin Burke, amazing fiddler. Um, just show you the Mulligan label there. Um, okay, kind of, kind of leprechaun -y kind of man on it. Um, uh, yeah, so... Uh, Mulligan active from about the mid 70s to the early 80s. Um, set up specifically for folk, but uh, one thing a lot of people might not know about the Mulligan label is that they it was also instrumental in. It also released the the very first Irish um, punk um, bands releases 
uh, there's qu quite a few the very early boom channel rats and um, radiators from space so radiators from space were the I think the very first Irish punk band uh, a, a lot of them it released a lot of stuff by uh, by them as well um, but anyway that that's besides the point but this is if the cap fits by Kevin Burke and yeah, quite a rare album and it goes for quite a lot so very nice find for 50 cent and um, this is another one with Kevin Burke um, and um, uh, Jackie Daly and this is called Eavesdropper it's from 1981 and this is also on Mulligan and uh, this is another uh, touchstone uh, this um, these were kind of Irish American uh, some members Irish, some members American, kind of um, crossed Irish traditional music with um, uh, bluegrass. Um, this came out in 1982. It's called The New Land uh, on Green Linnet. Um, Michal O'Donnell and Trina. Yeah, so. Um, what was her name again? Um, oh, good. Um, anyway, it's um, not a very nice find. Um, kind of bluegrass meets kind of Irish folk. folk. Uh, not a folk album, this time English. Um, I actually never heard of this guy, and I thought from his name that he was French or something, but no, he's English. Um, Leon Roselson, uh, he's a London Jewish, which explains his name, so um, very kind of Billy Bragg kind of, um, reminds me a lot of Billy Bragg, maybe a more traditional old school version of Billy Bragg. Uh, this came out in 1986 um, on a label called um, um, Fuse Records. Um, very kind of political, um, very left-wing, a um, lot of stuff about Thatcher and the uh, political situation in England in the 80s. Uh, very interesting, as, uh, again. Uh, Martin, Martin Carty uh, is on this as well. Uh, um, ben, I think you'd like this one. Um, okay, um, and my only, the only true jazz find um, Zoot Sims meets Jimmy Jimmy Zoot Sims Zoot Sims meets Jimmy Rolls. Um, if I'm lucky, uh, 1978 on the Europa label. Um, fantastic saxophone and, and piano playing on this. So Zoot Sims, um, kind of member of big bands, I think. Um, great, great um, old school jazz there. Um, okay, so every, everything else I'm going to show is classical. Um, there's loads of Baroque and early music. Um, Purcell, uh, one of my favorite composers. Um, Karam, I gave, gave you a CD by him. Um, uh, funeral music for Queen Mary. Um, uh, this is on the EMI label. Um, Purcell, uh, late 17th century, um, early, early English Baroque. And some Elizabethan music, uh, William Byrd, um, English Elizabethan composer, um, Mass for Five Voices, early uh, choral music, and this is on the Argo label. And in a similar vein, this fine fellow, Orlando Gibbons, uh, Madrigals and Motet 1612. Um, uh, this is on a very interesting label, um, Le Sue Lyre, which um, uh, specializes in inner early and Baroque music. I uh, love that label, and um, this is a great find. I'm very pleased with that. Uh, more kind of early, early and Baroque music, um, Philip Jones Brass Ensemble. This is kind of uh, marching and mar martial martial music 
Um, again, oh, more stuff from William Byrd. He, he he turns up on quite a few of um, of these finds. Uh, that's on Argo again. And uh, this is very nice. Harp music by John Parry. Uh, John Parry, a blind Welsh harpist of the 18th century. Uh, Synod, Synod Williams. Um, so I, I, I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, Welsh name uh, on harp. Um, this is pretty. This is, again. This is pretty rare. This goes for quite a bit. Um, I haven't listened to it yet, but um, a very very nice find. Um, more choral music. Um, um, again, William Byrd. Again, more compositions by William Byrd, and also by um, Peter Maxwell Davies, who um, who actually passed away recently. Um, actually, just I think last month. Um, he was one of the Manchester School of Modern English Composers. Um, so that's um, um, yeah. So on this record with, with some uh, Elizabethan composers. Um, I'll try and get through them pretty quickly. Um, French, Impress, French Impressionist Piano, Christina Oritz. Christina Oritz is a Brazilian pianist. Um, more piano, Grieg, Piano Concerto. Um, this is on Decca. Um, and um very pleased to find these two. They're actually part of part one and part two. John Field. Uh, the John Field, the Irish Chopin. Um, Irish composer of the early 19th century. Um, his nocturnes, but and he's he's hard enough to find his stuff, his 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 work in the wild. Um, this is on Turnabout. Uh, very interesting label. Uh, this was released in nineteen seventy, and this kind of, this this artwork is kind of an example of how psychedelic imagery even permeated um, classical kind of artwork, classical music artwork. Um, so. Um, and again, a kind of psychedelic looking um, Ravel and F Fauré, um, two French composers. Um, this is on, this is on Decca. Um, again, another great cover, a Yannick Yannick, um, Czech composer. Uh, also on Decca. Oh, and this, I'm very pleased to find this one. Uh, it's Stravinsky, The Rites of Spring. Um, I have quite a few versions of The, of the Rites of Spring, uh, including another one conducted by Boulet, um, Pierre Boulet, that um, French avant-garde co composer and conductor who passed away recently. Uh, this is um, Rites of Spring. This is on CBS, I think, from 1969. And again, pretty... Pretty interesting, kind of almost kind of almost psychedelic influence cover. Um, Prokofiev um, and Bartok. Um, this is on this is on Phillips, I think. Um, some modern English composers on here. Music for clarinet and piano. Um, and finally, uh, this is one I was going to leave behind at first because it was marked four euros, and, but that was before I found out that everything was 50 cent, so I um, added this in the end. Um, uh, Nicholas Danby, Occasional Pieces and Romantic Organ Works. Uh, this is a double album. Um, it's on a label called Diamond Cuff, which I've never seen before. Okay, so uh, that total haul came to a total of um, 11 euros and 50 cent I think which I think roughly is roughly equal to just about 13 US dollars so 23 records 
um, at 50 cent each. Now, 50 cent is, I think that is like the lowest I've ever picked up individual vinyl vinyl album pieces for. Um, generally, even in charity shops, it's highly unusual to find records for even as low as a euro. Um, you do sometimes, but generally they're like two, three euros, so 50 cent each, 23 records. Um, yeah, you just can't go wrong there. Um, okay, so I'll leave it at that. Um, thanks very much for watching, and um, hope you enjoyed it.